Welcome to the ASGE Tip of the Week. I'm Chris Thompson from Brigham Women's Hospital, and I'm with Dr. Allison Schulman, who's our endoscopic bariatric fellow. And she's going to tell us about a fairly routine case of stenosis after Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. So this is a classic case of stenosis. This is a 37-year-old woman who underwent Roux-en-Y gastric bypass approximately two years ago. Uh, her procedure was uncomplicated, and she lost about 90 pounds in the year following surgery. However, on her most recent clinic visit, she started to complain of nausea, vomiting, reflux, and overall inability to tolerate POs. We ended up doing an endoscopy, and this is what we saw. Here we are in the esophagus, passing through the gastroesophageal junction. As we can see, the gastrojejunal anastomosis is severely strictured. Multiple attempts are performed to pass an upper endoscope, however, these are unsuccessful. A hydrostatic balloon is passed through the stenotic region. It is important to use a wire to guide placement and to position the dilation balloon in the center of the stenosis. Dilation to 12 millimeters is performed and this is held in place for three minutes. As you can see, the tissue appears whitish in color and relatively ischemic, suggesting successful dilation. The dilation balloon is then removed and evaluation of the small bowel is performed to ensure no perforation. The upper endoscope is now able to easily pass through the gastrojejunal anastomosis, clearly indicating successful dilation. Stenosis of the gastrojejunal anastomosis occurs in up to 20% of patients after gastric bypass. It's more common with a laparoscopic approach and with circular staplers, and it can occur any time following gastric bypass. The etiology is unclear, however, tissue ischemia and tension at the anastomosis have been implicated. Typical symptoms include nausea, vomiting, dysphagia, reflux abdominal pain, and inability to tolerate oral intake. The diagnosis is usually made in upper endoscopy um, with inability to pass the endoscope through the anastomosis. Upper GI series can also make the diagnosis. However, this is not preferable due to the risk of aspiration. The literature suggests that endoscopic balloon dilatation is successful in over 99% of patients and that dilatation to 15 millimeters is safe, with decreasing the need for repeat procedures. And this is associated with a perforation rate of under 3%. So this is a pretty routine case of gastrojejunal stenosis following Roux-en-Y gastric bypass. One question I thought was worth uh, entertaining was why we chose to initially dilate to only 12 millimeters uh, when the literature supports potentially starting at 15 millimeters. Um, sure, that's a good point. You know, we like to start with um, lower diameter dilatations initially because in many cases a patient doesn't need to go all the way to 15 millimeters uh, to have a uh, resolution of symptoms. And additionally, if you go too large, I do believe you're starting to increase your chances of perforation and um, also weight regain. So we do know that patients that dilate their anastomoses can develop weight regain. There's even some lawsuits out there with patients uh, that are suing their providers uh, because they had their anastomosis, but they what they think is over dilated, and now they're gaining weight. So, I do include that in the consent form as well. I say you may, you know, have weight regain with this, and uh, I make sure they're aware of that and they acknowledge that. And then I tend to go uh, um, slowly and tell them it's going to probably require a few sessions, and I try to dilate it just enough so they don't have symptoms, uh, but also not too large so that they have um, weight regain. So, thank you. I think that's an excellent example of uh, gastrojunal anastomotic stenosis and how we treat it.